All right, what's up everyone? It's Nick here. I'm with professional golfer and creature, David Gazzolo. What's up, David? How's it going? Good. Thanks, Nick. So um, we're gonna dive into kind of his story and figure out how he turned golf into his daily life and how he turned this creature activity into to his lifestyle. So um, let's get started. were you when you first started getting into golf? Uh, so I started playing golf when I was probably 12, 13, and then um, played all through high school, got a scholarship for college, went to UCR, Nice. and then uh, I turned pro right after I graduated. And um, so I made it to final stage that year at Q School, and then kind of every year I've progressed and just yeah. played bigger and better events. When so. did you know like this was kind of what you wanted to do? for living? Um, probably freshman or sophomore year of college. Nice. Um, actually, Brendan Steele, who's on the PJ Tour, went to the same mm. school I did, and so that was kind of like, I guess, motivation, and I saw those guys on the PGA and like wanted to be yeah. exactly where they're at. What is um, kind of like, the feeling you have when you're playing golf. Yeah, when you hit like really good shots or you win, mm -hmm. right, it always drives you back. And so the stress and pressure, like actually when you're like mm -hmm. playing, playing like in a tournament, everything kind of dissipates. Yeah. Right. And then there's like nothing on your mind. Like there's like nothing pushing you down. It's just kind of nice and it's you like, feel like pretty free. free. Yeah. Free. I say free. Yeah. You know that's your thing because when you get in those high pressure situations, it just all the noise goes away. Yeah. It's so, just you and the ball, you know? So yeah, if you just stay focused for me like on the process, mm -hmm. like not think about results or kind of the past or the future, just stay in the present and that's really helpful to plan well and yeah. kind of succeeding. What would you say, there's a lot of people out there who kind of have these daydreams, we call it, because for me at least, I was always daydreaming about what I wanted to do, like when I got home or yeah. after school or like couldn't wait until I got to do that activity, you know? So what would you say to people who are, they want to take that next step to make their daydream like their full-time reality? Like what would be one takeaway you'd kind of suggest? Yeah, put more time in it and more focus. Yeah, no. um, I always kind of think that everyone has potential to do whatever they want. Yeah. Right, like you're not getting pushed down by anything. Mm -hmm. So there, there's going to be obstacles and whatnot, but you can literally do probably whatever job or career or um, sports or whatever. You can do whatever you want. So that's yeah. kind of my mindset. So then from there on, it's just the work you put in and then not only the work, but smart, right? So like when I practice, it's not a bunch of time out there. It's not quantity, it's quality, yeah. right? So everything is very specific to what I need to get better at. Mm. It's not just hitting balls for two hours. Like that's kind of boring and it's not going to do much. But then it's when it, when I get to like random practice or just kind of more drill set for my swing. And yeah. I'd say smart kind of work is a lot better. So the first step would be kind of like realizing that you can, like you have the potential to yeah, become exactly, yeah. like good in that space. Mm -hmm. And then taking like the daily, a few daily actions maybe to like increase your skill yeah. or whatever you would need to make that transition like a full time yeah. job. It's a good way to put it, yeah. I agree. That's, exactly. that's clutch because there's so many people that's like, man, I really love mountain biking or yeah. like, I really love to play like tennis, I don't know what yeah. your thing may be. Everyone has like a different thing, but taking that step of realizing like you are enough to make that your life, yeah. you know. Self-belief I think is like really important. Yeah. Right, and like faith in yourself and confidence. And so I'm like really into like positive self-talk talk and stuff like that, especially playing or like kind of anything I do. And so I think that helps a lot to Kind of boost yourself and accomplish what you want yeah definitely because the world is going to tell you enough that you can't so you yeah, exactly you might as well not hold yourself back yeah and there's nothing wrong with 
failure, actually, in a sense. Like, yeah. that's how you learn to get better at something is mm -hmm. through trial and error. Yeah, to me, too, it's actually better if you fail, like, trying your hardest. Yeah. Because right? then exactly. you know, like, you can just evaluate yourself so much better to try again and kind of accomplish it. Say we're at David's funeral. Yeah. Like, what would you <laughs> want your legacy to be? You know, like, what do you want to kind of leave behind? That's pretty big. Um, I don't know. I kind of want to build, like, an empire. So I'd want maybe like a foundation that I created for golf. Um, maybe uh, like I designed courses afterwards when I retired. Um, maybe kind of owned some businesses of some sort, yeah. right? Or investments and uh, funeral. Basically just living life to your full. Yeah, life exactly. Life. Kind of like doing the most I can all the time. Would you say like the people you spend time with and kind of the people you associate with contribute like a large part to like your success and kind of ambition? Yeah, I agree. Um, everyone I kind of hang out with is very positive and um, a lot of my friends are golfers and they're trying to do the same thing. So it's just we kind of motivate each other, practice a lot together. Um, my family is very supportive and um, pretty optimistic, right? And then uh, got a good girlfriend, Haley. He does a good job of encouraging. But <clears throat> yeah, your friends are a big part. Yeah, in your definitely. success, especially like your loved ones too. Because I know Warren Buffett. He says um, that like it's the people you hang around, like your friends. Yeah. Then also like the spouse you choose is yeah. like the biggest one. Yeah, like, it's huge. Because you ultimately like take on thinking of that person you spend the most time with you know yeah all right well that's it everyone for for this episode um thanks, thanks guys. david for having on and sharing some good insights hopefully you guys got some good takeaways and can start pursuing the the own creature in your life and really chase after those things that like call to you every day so david thanks again thanks nick we'll see each other soon sounds good thanks everyone